Hey, what's going on? JD here. Basically, this is another photo editing live stream. Today, I am editing photos from the Killer Dwarves, Kick Axe, and of course, Helix, who were the headliners for the night. So I'm just going to run through basically my edits and do all that kind of stuff. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. If you do have questions about what I am doing, throw it in the questions down below um, I'm just gonna sort of jump through the photos here so this I'm gonna have to obviously make black and white because this color is not gonna be recovered uh, it's very 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 red so we're gonna go start right about here um, obviously I like to bump up the blacks Knock back the highlights just a touch. And that's kind of it. I like how he's playing in the background and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to tinyly, tiny crop there. Just kind of. That'll be work. So, with this shoot, hey, good to see you, Steve. Thanks for dropping in. So, as you can see with this shot, essentially. Uh, the concert last night, there was no barrier. It was a seated show, even though it was a heavy metal show, uh, because these guys have been around since the 1970s. I think Helix formed in 1973. Most of these guys were big in the 80s. It was an older audience, so it was seated. Uh, so I had to keep sort of crouched down below stage level as to not interfere with the crowd. So that will probably do it. Uh, his face is in focus, that's important. Uh, even though he's pointing, if this was in focus here, uh, his face would have been grotesquely out of focus. So that is okay with that. Um, again, you know, the lead singer of the Killer Dwarfs, a bit of a character. So just to show you the temperature adjustments here, even with color correction here, you're not going to, you know, there's nothing that you are going to do to save the color of this photograph. It is just too red. So I'm just going to undo those changes. And we're going to jump back. Again, we're going to go to black and white. He likes to kind of make those, those faces. Uh, probably too, too dark is my guess for this photograph. Uh, you can see there's a lot of grain introduced here. Although not the worst photograph in the world the moment we're gonna leave that so again you know you can see the heavy right reds there's nothing that we're gonna to do to save that color wise we're gonna bump down the highlights to sort of get his skin texture back I'm gonna bump up the blacks a little bit this one here I just want to kind of make a little bit of a pivot We're going to do it right about there, and that will be good enough. And we're going to just do a little bit of noise reduction to make sure that, you know, kind of that grain is out of there. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you later, Steven. So there we go. That's good. I will keep that one. I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, This one, not so bad color-wise. We're gonna bounce up the blacks. We go for medium contrast, punch it up a little bit. Uh, and that should be good. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna pump up the shadows just a little bit. You know, there's always that kind of fine line with uh, guys that wear hats where you know, with the face, you kind of have to be happy with the fact that, uh, you know, the rest of it is, is exposed properly. A lot of times, and if you shoot country sh country shows, you're going to have a hard time a lot of the time. Guys that wear cowboy hats, what happens is, is if you don't have a good light source, like I have a good light source here, but if I start tipping my head, it'll start shading my face, so I'll be exposed to one thing and my face will be exposed to something else. 
so it does cause you some difficulties. You can see again that red is just, it's just horrid. Like, it's horrid on the face, but I mean, we're fine here in the guitar. You know, it, it's, it wreaks havoc sort of on the skin tones. Uh, I'm just going to crop that a tiny, tiny little bit. Again, I don't typically like to crop much. I don't know if we could actually save him color-wise. Well, we can. We can get in there. So now I'm going to basically... We get a medium contrast in there, punch it up, and we should be good. Done. Like, And again, for anybody who's watched these streams for any amount of time will know that essentially this this is how fast I sort of edit and how much I put into there um, you know a lot of times I will baseline things like I will get the, the rough skin tones there um, sometimes I will actually crush them a little bit more or a little bit less but you want to kind of be in that range not bad and again you know a lot of these presets I just have and from there, I'll just kind of, you know, adjust as need be. And that's kind of it. It's really that straightforward. I mean, you can see I am not terribly doing a lot with exposure or anything like that. You know, I'm just sort of keeping it to that point. Uh, this shot, I kind of really like. I kind of wish there was better lighting because this is going to end up being black and white. Um, I don't think there's a lot that I can do to kind of save the coloring of it and I think it will look much much better as sort of that iconic black and white image I love the fact that the cables you know are sort of running up to the guitar in here I got the mic and all that kind of stuff I could do without the stage hand but uh, you know again it's a show it's it's you know you're capturing sort of the you know essence of it and in this case, I really, really like that shot. So, very, very, I like that shot. Very, very good. Uh, we've got the next one. Again, that red light just always kind of kills whatever you got going on. Highlights are a bit strong. I do want to punch up the blacks. I'm going to basically crop that down a bit. And there you go. I mean, I could actually probably crop it down a fair bit more. I don't want to crush it too, too much. I mean, the microphone stand. Um, with these kind of things, I mean, I definitely want to keep the guitar hand in there. I do want the microphone kind of out. And that, you know, that works. But, I'm not sure if that's sort of the best look for it. You know, I do kind of like mic stands in there, but typically when I do have them, I actually do kind of them like them, have, have them like that. But then this is just too much. Like this is just way too far. These guys are too far out. It's like, here's a microphone stand. So that does not work. But that will work. Again, you know, this horrible light. do like that shot as well he's just sort of looking back playing which is cool color correct that undo that because I did not mean to do that punch it out blacken it up reduce the highlights 
and we're just sort of in the zone that we want to be in. So, I mean, it's that simple. I mean, you know, when I'm not talking to the camera, I just typically fly through these. So, I said that magenta light that's here is just kind of a thorn in my side for the whole. my co-workers here in Duck and Down. <laughs> um, I noticed him till afterwards, but uh, I can't really cut him out at all. Uh, so we're good. Moving on to drum shot. So uh, in this case, because these guys were opening, opening, uh, I, I did go back in between songs and I did switch uh, full on to basically uh, a 70 to 200 and that way I had essentially uh, good good reach and I do like this shot I, I like it because he's you know obviously he's playing he's got his good drum face we got the Converse all-stars on he's obviously wearing cons which is super cool uh, and again you know it's these edits are super quick you know and you're gonna lose some of the stuff. Like, I mean, his face is in focus. Obviously, this is out of focus because it's pushed forward. But the important part is here because the focus is here. And even with that kind of lighting that they had going on, this will this will be a much nicer shot because this one it was most definitely not as harsh. Don't even have to really kick up the blacks terribly a lot. Punch out the shadows a bit because it's black on black. I like it with the blue in there. Good and done. And one more again of the drummer. Pop that down a bit. Kind of want it there. Again, action shot. You got a little motion blur in the sticks, which is to be expected. And the drum stuff, so all kind of cool. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13 shots. I want to cut it down. Um, uh, now these, this is where it becomes difficult in the sense that you want to okay this one is gone I like that one keeping that keeping that One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. I gotta get rid of two photos here. Um, always the hard part. Uh, if you're in the chat looking at it, uh, tell me which shot you think I should probably ditch. I gotta keep the basis because I've only got one of the basis. I like that. It's got the killer dwarfs in the back. I do like that as well. That's very similar to the other one. So that one or keeping that one. Ah, oh, decisions. I like that because he's looking back. This one goes. Gotta ditch one more. Um, I think it might be this one. Drum face I like. 
You know what? It's that one. That guy goes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got ten, so we're good there. Okay, on to kick axe. Uh, kick axe last night was actually um, they, were, they were really good. They were super good. Uh, their lead singer was awesome. You know, it was. Uh, I don't like the angle of this, so I'm actually going to twist it just a fraction, like that. It's a weird thing when you're shooting in concerts and angles, like sometimes horizon lines and all that kind of stuff. You know, you've got to play to sort of the background being flat and, you know, making sure that they look like they're upright and all sorts of stuff. But I'm just going to zoom that down. We're going to drop the highlights just a touch. Um, It's going to be too orange. That's where we kind of want to be, I think. It's an awesome purple in the guitar. I'm going to reduce that noise a little bit. You can see how there is noise in the background, but I mean, that's obviously when you're shooting it that high in ISO is going to happen. So that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's actually not a ton that's really, really super needed for it. Again, you know, sort of the ultimate goal when you are shooting concert photography is get it right in camera first. Um, and this is what I mean. Uh, Kick Axe last night, he was really, really good. Lots of good poses, all that kind of stuff. Um, good facial expressions, playing to the cameras, all that kind of stuff. You know, makes it super, super easy to kind of do your job. Um, And again, you know, you kind of, I, I kind of like to shoot a little bit hotter uh, versus lighter. Uh, what I, what I'm always scared about are, are blowing out certain parts. But I mean, it's easier to scale back the darkness than it is to uh, sort of pump up the shadows without integrating noise. You know, it's very actually like if you look at that, the noise isn't terribly bad. And we will not introduce grain, but we are going to reduce some noise just a tiny, tiny little bit. So again, keeper, and I'm going to have a hard time with this, this set as well because there is a lot of decent kind of shots. You can see the information is there, but the color um, kind of, you know, messes those things up. I'm going to pump up the blacks because I like my stuff nice and contrasty. That's one thing you will notice when I edit is that I do kind of just love the contrast and this is what I mean like if we go there we're probably a little bit better That's what I kind of like because it's kind of an odd thing, although there is a bit of motion blur going on in his hand. And I was shooting at 1 3 20th of a second, so it's quite a quick spin. So we're going to, I think I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to leave it there until later on. I'm not going to edit it. Um, There we go. Good contrast. You know, it's just sort of the epitome of, uh, of metal and rock and all that kind of stuff that we have going on here that uh, 
essentially, you know, he's got, you know, the black pants and all that kind of stuff. You know, the way it reflects the light, the different colors, you know, off the lights, I think it works really, really well. Like I said, you know, these guys have been playing metal for a long time. While they might not have the popularity that they once have, I will say this. What really impressed me was they all are very, very seasoned performers. They're all, you know, the epitome of being professional sort of musicians and, you know, very much on their game because they have been doing it for so long. Uh, they know how to play to their crowd and all that kind of stuff, and it's just it's super good. Again, you know, just the fact uh, that he, you know, his gestures are grand. That is in focus. I have to look with my glasses. Um, you know, one of the big things I have to look for is, is focus, obviously. Again, we'll put that down. We're going to jump those highlights down. Um, again, it's easier to sort of drop the highlights sort of in the face. Um, as long as the burn-ins don't get too, too bad, you know, it's uh, all kind of good. You know, he's, he's good and he's tack sharp. And we're going to reduce some of that noise in the background. You know super clean super sharp we're just going to kind of rotate them just a tiny touch just to sort of get there and again that's that's kind of what we do as a process again i just i'm going to basically reduce this one because i know i'm going to want it tighter and again it's kind of kind of interesting you know like i said uh You know, sort of building. Actually, that exposure, I could probably drop a half step here. He's kind of red in his face. But that's, you know, that looks like just effort more than anything else. There is a bit of red light kicking around there. But, reduce the noise. And again, a keeper. And, and again, I'm going to have difficulty sort of getting this down to where I want it to be. I like that one because he's picking up the mic stand. Oh, we sort of jumped there. I'm not sure. Today's video, I was actually going to do this all in Creative Cloud, uh, and I've been looking to sort of switch. I, I think it's good to have my stuff sort of backed up and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I jumped way ahead. That's Helix now. Uh, let's jump back uh, to where we were. Here we go. But, you know, in it, I, I would say if you are getting into photography and stuff like that. <clears throat> Lightroom Creative Cloud is good, but it is not great for what I would say is professionals. And the reason I say that is I was looking at some stuff on there because I just quickly imported a few images. I wanted to set up my watermarks in there, which apparently you, you could probably do. I don't know, I didn't see anything for it. But because I, before I even got to that point, when I was doing the export Persian, Persian, eh, portion, typically where you add the watermarks in Lightroom Classic, the issue became essentially that there was no spot to sort of, you know, export uh, from there and, and how to export. It, it was kind of really weird that there were no way to, you know, size the image, quality of image, all those kind of things. It just, uh, it was really kind of, interesting in those regards so again yeah and i mean like you can see it's it's cool like the little particles of dust that's not like stuff that's dust coming off wherever you know and uh that's how much detail and stuff that you know will get picked up so cool stuff uh drummer shot it's the only drummer shot i took a kick axe because when I shot it, I knew I had it. Um, and I knew that was it was kind of it. Because he reached out, he had the drumsticks, he's going like this. I mean, it was, it was what I wanted most definitely. And, uh, you know, at that point when you know you have the shot, and I had a little bit of time to sort of, you know, 
uh, what I would say is kind of chimp it. Uh, take a look at the back of the camera. I knew that uh, we were golden there, and uh, yeah, I mean, it worked perfect. The color, all that kind of stuff, I knew it right at the time. I mean, that was the only shot I took of the drummer. Drummers are, you know, kind of interesting to always kind of shoot. Uh, they can be very, very difficult. A lot of it depends on the artists and their stage layouts. Sometimes you can't get the stuff that you need. Sometimes, you know, they are so hidden behind, you know, sort of the cymbals and the drums and they're playing nice and low and down that you don't get a good face shot. But like I said, when they pop up, if you're if you're waiting for the right opportunities, they will definitely present themselves. Hey, what's going on, Divic King? Good to see you. I am just editing photos from Kickax, Helix, and uh, of course, uh, the Killer Dwarfs. I've already gone through all the Killer Dwarf stuff, so we're now on to Kickax. So again, you know, that's sort of where I want to be. Uh, we've done the noise reduction on to the next one. Again, okay, so here I like this because we've got the hair going on. Again, this is, you know, shot probably a little hot. So, again, you know, I, I do have these two settings set to sort of auto uh, where I get my my photos kind of where I want. And then usually just I pump up the blacks and then I will definitely drop down the... Uh, the colors kind of scheme so we'll definitely go there uh, that is too cold so I'm gonna bump that up now if you see what happened I'm gonna jump back there you know you can't always rely on sort of auto tools to me this is way too cold uh, this is way too cold image wise it's not something that um, I would put out that cold uh, so generally speaking, I'll kind of jump on it and then I'll get it to where I want. I kind of want a little bit more skin tone, a little bit more color to them. And that's where I want it to be. And again, exposure, I could probably drop that down about a half a step. Um, again, you know, it's easier. I find it easier out of personal preference to maybe shoot a little bit lighter at the concert and then sort of scale it back versus shooting not enough and not getting enough light in and then trying to recover information so you know again you have to be careful on both ends if it's too dark there's no recovering from that if it is too hot there's no recovering from that either you know just for me personal preference is to sort of step down wow i never realized how much work went into editing uh generally i'm a lot faster usually i, I typically uh i would honestly say uh is that i'm much much faster than this the fact that i'm talking when i do these now when i work i do these little streams for kind of all the shows that i shoot uh and, and sort of explain my process explain what was going through my head and you know uh, how i went about the image like this is a good example of the image i i had been he had this mic stand he moved it around he had moved it around earlier uh there was a couple missed opportunities basically he had he had leaned it and the whole pedestal like it cut off like a little corner uh so me i wanted to get it sort of an action shot you know like this but the fact that he just pulled and ripped it and he was like you know bringing up the mic to sing and his hair swinging and all that kind of stuff it just you know that was the shot i was looking for and you know all that kind of stuff uh i don't do how to do video edits and there's a reason for that uh, I don't do those live. I mean, I could definitely do that as something else. The thing is, is that with the video, because there is so much processing power involved, that to stream it, right? Because basically, um, obviously, I, I'm videotaping myself here. I can see you in that camera. Or if I switch to the front-facing camera, you know, we can definitely do that as well. Uh, as well, but, you know, this software... Uh, generally because this photo is not taking up a huge ton and ton of memory uh you know it does take up a bit of stuff but video edit would just be too cumbersome at the end of the day but i'm really kind of digging that shot there is a little bit of noise in the background so we're going to do a little bit of noise reduction and what i mean by noise is it just you can just kind of see it's a little spotty some of that is because it is actually smoke that we're looking at but I just want to smooth it out just a little bit so there's no grain in the blacks. And I don't know. I like that photo. I think that photo is... I think that's money. That that's that's To me, that's a good shot. That's, uh, you know, probably the best shot that I came out of it. Um, again, you know, this was just me sort of making up for further mistakes. 
So this is, is an example of what happened earlier on. I would have preferred to have captured this and be a little bit wider, but I mean, it still kind of works. Um, I am a lot more partial to sort of that, but I like that pose better. Um, and, and that being said, I'm probably going to go with that pose because it is a lot more sort of dynamic. Again, you know, shooting hot, going to drop it down half a step. We got some color in out of there. We're going to bump that up a fraction. We still want, we don't want it to be that cold. So there we go. Bump up the blacks. Knock a touch off the highlights. And again, like that's kind of a money shot right there. I think that's, uh, you know, good. And again, I don't like to crop. I mean, you know, we could definitely do stuff like this. And, uh, you know, it's these are going to the web. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, that's still a good shot because they have the megapixels. Uh, you, you can basically crop down. But the problem is, is that you can't really blow that up. And I'm kind of weird that way. So I kind of want it to be the way I shot it. And I mean, that's how I intended it at the time. And that's what we're going to keep. Basis had like this super crazy. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Like that has to be custom made. That base has to be custom made. Because um, it was super wild. Again, we probably were a bit hot. We're going to go over the blacks. We're going to drop down the highlights. Uh, because this was shot probably at the end of the focal length of my uh, shooting a 24 to 70, and that was probably 70. We're just going to crop it down just to get a little bit close. Again, I don't mind that kind of stuff because these are destined for the web. Uh, but at the end of the day, it works. Again, nice kind of shot. Make sure. Uh, medium, punch it up. We'll get the temperature a little bit right. We will definitely bump up. That color, drop the backs, drop the highlights. Again, I love that purple in that guitar. It just looks cool. There's a wide shot. I was trying to get a little bit of the Kick Axe logo there, but it's... We'll go with that. The nice thing, other than the first band, the first band, you know, was really, really red. Uh, they cut down the reds in the second one. And, I mean, you can see how tack sharp that is. You can read that he's actually wearing a Harley Davidson hat and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, super cool. Uh, Divot asks, when you started, did you shoot on actual film and develop? I did. I did. Um, I did not make the jump to digital for quite some time uh you know it, it is most definitely a lot different kind of game when you shoot film uh I, I find that film is a little bit better you can see my co cohorts uh shooting down there in the photo pit with me just gonna Close that off a little bit. And we're going to bump up the blacks. Uh, it makes a big difference. Uh, you know, in all honesty, the... Not a custom base, the Batman one. Really, really. That's, uh, that's the first time I have seen that that design. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely unique. But, you know, sort of talking about the film stuff and, you know, shooting digital, you know, digital is a lot easier to shoot uh, these days, uh, mainly because you get immediate feedback. I know uh, exactly where I need to be. And this is why probably I don't have um, a ton of editing, what I would consider a ton of editing to do. So, you know, it's... 
you know, in the case here, I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, sort of quick couple taps, change the blacks, change the highlights, you know, drop the exposure just a tiny, tiny bit. And we're good. I mean, that's all stuff that you could do in a dark room kind of anyways on how you expose it and how you print it. But I mean, at the end of the day, much, much easier because if you were completely out, you could shoot a roll of film and, you know, you would have essentially nothing but garbage. Uh, we're getting a little bit more of a close up here. Generally go there. Blacks, highlights. Maybe a bit too much on the blacks. And again, you know, just checking to make sure the focus is here. You know, as long as we have the face in focus. I mean, you got to think that essentially um, right there, like the fact that you can almost read those barcodes is absolutely insane. In fact, you can read the brand of lock and the fact the crazy, I don't, I don't know if you can see it on the stream, but it says made in China right at the bottom there at, on his little lock for his, uh, you know, dog collar kind of metal eighties metal stuff. And like I said, these guys are from the eighties. So, I mean, it's all cool. Again, this was a shot that I was going for. I knew that what I wanted and just basically went and got it. It's, uh, I wanted him up in front. I knew this was a super awesome guitar. The fact that they got the chrome kick axe in the back, uh, you know, kind of goes along with the guitar. So that's where I wanted it to be. And that's what we got. And again, another action shot here. You know, super, super cool in the sense that, uh, although I'm going to drop this one, I think, because there is a bit of motion blur there. Um... Yeah, I, I think I'm going to drop that because I know I'm going to have to make some decisions anyways. Um, actually, I'll do this. You can take a look. You can see here. Uh, I'm not sure how clear it comes through in the video, but I mean, his eyes are a little bit out of focus. Uh, looks like the camera caught focus. Uh, just a little bit further out. Uh, or it could be the motion. Although I did shoot at 1 3 20th, so it should be fine. Uh, you can see I'm at 3,245 mil, 45, you know, so sorry, that one is gone. And then last one, guitarist again, I had darkened this up a bit, but we're going to medium and punch it. And we're just going to quickly change a little bit of the temperature here because he is red hot. He's still pretty hot, but... Kind of going to go there. And this would work really well as a black and white as well because how it fades out with a spotlight to the rest of the stage. Uh, Val Kilmer rocked it. Val Kilmer is, in my opinion, one of the worst Batmans ever. Uh, not not a fan of Val Kilmer as Batman. I'm not a fan of a lot of Batmans. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what it, what it is, but essentially, you know, I find that uh, because I probably read Batman comics for so long that you know it kind of ruined it for me a little bit and if you don't know we're now on to helix obviously by the back sign uh, and of course Brian Vollmer uh, lead singer for a long long time uh, you know these guys have been around since the 70s and you know, they, they have rocked it. Uh, one of the kind of things that I found interesting that, you know, he was sort of talking about and, you know, he was singing a bit. I'm just going to change the blues, drop that down. Was that, uh, you know, granted it was a good show in Calgary last night and the audience was absolutely spectacular. You know, uh, one of their songs, uh, you know, what... One of the Helix songs that they sang is Even Jesus Isn't Loved in His Hometown. And I mean, it's it's kind of funny, you know, like uh, these guys will go out there, uh, you know, Helix will head out and they will play places like Sweden where they are treated like gods. 
uh, and they will get back to Canada and a lot of people just really don't, you know, remember them or, you know, don't pay that much attention to them. But I mean, these guys are fantastic. I used to listen to them all the time in the 80s. Uh, I still enjoy watching them play and they just have a good time. And like I said, they are true seasoned performers and musicians. Um, kind of like that, but I need to change that angle. Just want a flat horizon. See that? That's too blue. Um, and in fact, I would say the color is actually pretty decent. Again, I'm just going to drop the highlights down a bit. And there you go. Awesome. Another good shot of Brian Vollmer. Actually, I have to go back here. Uh, kick axe. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I'm not going to pick that one. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're going to take that one off. 16, 17, 18. We got to drop like eight images. This is going to be tough. Um, this is uh, it's going to be tough decisions. This. Uh, this, this is one of the hard things, the hard decisions that I have. Hey, uh, good to see you, Rose Malin Mantilla. Thanks for dropping in and watching the live photo edits. Uh, Diva King says, after you shoot these guys, do you ever go backstage at all when invited? Um, generally, I'm out of the building before the everything's over. Um, generally I'm, you know, out of here. I do have to get usually some images out for social medias for that night. Um, so these are the main edits, uh, that I'm doing now. I did some edits last night and got those out. Um, so, you know, it's, do I, do I hang out with the guys? Like, I mean, it, it really kind of depends. I mean, some guys that I know very, very well, I will go hang out with them before the show and we'll hang about and, you know, shoot the shit kind of thing. And But, I mean, to be honest, show night for these guys are, are very, very busy. Uh, it's their job. You know, they have typically meet and greets beforehand or they will do signings afterwards and all that kind of stuff. And then usually, you know, depending on how young or old, they might be partying as well. So, I mean, um, you know... It's, it's definitely an interesting thing, you know, for the vast majority of time I'm there to work to do a job, all that kind of stuff. My job is, you know, just at different portions of that, you know, kind of scenario and, you know, it's just kind of how it is. I mean, you know, they're, they're definitely, I've talked to Brian before as well, Brian Vollmer from Helix. He's a super cool guy, um, you know, and, and like I said, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed their music since, uh, you know, they were, you know, sort of very very early in the 80s when they had bigger poofier hair and all that kind of stuff and you know they were just killing it so but yeah i mean it's 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 a good time you know a lot of times i will actually go out uh you know for lunch with these guys or dinner with these guys at different times when they just happen to be around so uh super super cool um oh you came from no tebs vlog okay uh i actually uh I had lunch with him today. Uh, we had a YYC2 meetup for a bunch of Calgary YouTubers. Uh, we went to the rec room. We had a good time. So uh, I, Noitebs came out. Uh, I know him as Steven now. So Steven came out and uh, he, he hung out and I got to meet him in person. Uh, you know, I just sort of made his acquaintance through YouTube. So it was cool to actually meet him in real life. So uh, that was super fun. Uh I know he was vlogging a little bit and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was super cool to see him as well. So now i got to reduce these 18 photos. And, again, this is where it comes difficult, where I have to make some difficult choices. I do kind of, when I do these things, I, I have certain selections. So I need so many of each. I need at least one of each person in the band. Uh, more focus is fine for the lead singer, obviously. So as far as it goes, 
I like that shot, but the one, you know, two steps down, this one is better. Uh, so you go goodbye. Um, I like that shot. We're also good there. You see, he is just on fire. He was just, you know, the rock in the air. Uh, I like that, but it's gone. Um, drummer's stand because that's the only photograph that I took uh, of the drummer. Uh, that one stays because that one's that one's a keeper. Like that's just the the awesome part of it. So uh, the turnout was fantastic. The sh the show uh, was completely seated, which was funny. You know, I, I was sort of joking with people before the show. And, and forgive me, Brian, and Kick Axe, and Killer Dwarfs, and all that kind of stuff. I love you guys immensely. Uh, I, I'm a fan as much as I enjoy, you know, take it, taking photographs of you guys. But, you know, I sort of joke that, you know, you guys have been around for a long time. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a seated, because it's metal. It is, the, they are metal, they're Canadian metal. It's, you know, 80s metal, so it's a little more rock. It's a little more radio rock now. It's not metal like it used to be that never got radio play. And essentially... You know, <laughs> the funny part, I, I was joking, I'm like, I wonder if it'll be seated, and I wonder if they'll have walker parking, was kind of my joke. Uh, sure enough, it was seated. Uh, but, you know, like, I will say this, the audience did push forward, and security, you know, um, there was two guys there, because there was no barrier, and they didn't think much of it. You know, they had their work cut out for them, because, you know, like, these, these guys that are in there... And ladies that are in their 40s and like to dance and party and all that kind of stuff and want to go out and sort of relive those glory days, they were definitely doing it. it was, the, the show was packed. It was great. Um, like I said, it was it's it's one of the better shows that I have seen in a long, long time. These guys did an awesome job. Um, so back to selecting. So we've got one, two, um, kind of. I like that. I like that. Got to keep the drummer. That's definitely staying. Um, I don't know. We'll get back to it. That's okay. That is also okay, but I don't want to be too lead singer. I think that's the only shot that I have of him. We are going to keep the wide. Uh, I like the basis shot. I like that shot. I like that shot. Um... I don't know. This is like this is the brutal part. Is making these cuts, you know. This is, the truth of the matter is is that these will probably be the only time that these photographs get seen and I'm cutting them out and I don't think they're actually that bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 shots. Oh my god. Keeping it, keeping it, keeping it. Keeping it. Definitely keeping it. Oh, if it was just perfect, it would be so much easier to say keep it, but I think I'm going to let it go. Um that's going to go. It's not necessary. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Um, it's kind of crazy. Got to keep him. Okay. Gone. Keeping, keeping... Gone. One, two, three, four, five. Some of these are going to have to go. That one. Yeah, there was uh, two other photographers working that night. A uh, uh, house photographer who is always there for the Great Eagle. So they have a, their own photographer that works in-house. Um, two. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got thirteen. I gotta ditch three. So yeah, I mean they they, they have their stuff. They're doing their thing. Uh, generally, the photographer for Gray Eagle, his stuff ends up either on the wall somewhere or printed and signed and put up somewhere in the casino or typically socials and that's kind of it um so i kind of really he he pretty much just puts out his one banger shot so if i was doing his job it would probably be this one uh that would be my my shot that went out for the night because i would pick that for kick axe um and a lot of times it's just the one band the highlight so a lot of times the guys that open the there's no shots that are published I don't know how much control he has over stuff, but that's kind of it. There's another girl there. I've seen her before, but I have no idea where she works or who she's producing images for. I still kind of like that shot. All right, we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to I'm gonna send 13, and they can make the decisions. I usually like to make my own. Uh, you know, Brian, Brian... Got the bassists. This will probably go. I think I've got better shots of them. Yeah, nice and sharp. I do kind of like the black and white look, though. I am very partial to black and white photos, but, you know. I'm just going to kind of cut this down just a little bit. It was one of the, the difficult parts about being so close to the stage is that, you know, it's you can't sort of get their full body. It couldn't stand up because you'd block people's uh, views and all that kind of stuff. I like this shot of Brian. Again, you know, computer selection there is way too blue. Yeah, I like that shot. I do like that shot. Okay. Now this one I know. I think. Okay, first off, we're checking focus. Pretty good. So we're pretty good in both. I don't know. I kind of like that he kicks his... Uh... <clears throat> I kind of like that he kicks his foot out. I'll be sending them to the magazine uh, is where these are destined to go. So they should be up in the next day or so. Uh, I think I like... You know, we're going to go with that. We're going to get rid of this guy. We're going to keep with this guy. Should have done that with this one as well. Just kind of drop the exposure about a half step. Bump up the highlights, and there we go. There we go. Blacks. So, like I said, with the hats, it's very difficult to get the eyes. 
But uh, it's all part of his looks, kind of that steampunk thing he's going for. So that is cool. Um, this one I'm disappointed with myself that I cut off the end of the guitar. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. The image is still what I want, but I mean, it's just, it's just kind of that uh, unfortunate thing that happens once in a while that you're just kind of not perfect. It would have been perfect otherwise, you know, having both in there and all that kind of stuff. Obviously way too blue. There we go. Again, I'm going to have to pick some things, so I'm going to unpick this guy. Um, well, maybe I will keep that. Uh, we'll just develop it quickly. That's super cool. Um, and this is kind of the thing, like... You know these guys have some cool stuff like that is obviously hand embroidered specifically for Helix. Um, super awesome. Yeah, it's kind of super cool. I'm gonna leave that one for now. Okay, this one here is just kind of which one I end up deciding to do. I think that one I don't like because of the light already. Kind of like the... And, and this is kind of the weird thing where you, you make your choices and all that kind of stuff. In all honesty, the difference between these is a little bit of angle, a little bit of position, and in all honesty, I like how his hands look in this one a little bit better. You know, that is the deciding factor for me. The fact that this hand is a little kind of crunched in and it's pushing up, whereas here it's like kind of flat and these aren't as expressive. So that will probably be my shot right there. Uh, we'll go there, kind of knock it down a little bit, pump up the blacks, drop the highlights. Boom. All in your head with rock, Sweden rock, established 1992. Like I said, that's the crazy thing with these photographs and when, when you, you take the photographs is if you're in focus, you can read so much information out of there. Um, so we're going to unselect that. Drummer shot. Focus is good. Focus is good. We've got hands versus no hands. So you know what's going to happen here. We're going to unselect that one. Or we're going to drop it out there. We're going to fix his color temperature a bit. Crop that. Just a little bit of noise, and we're good. <laughs> and I just like the fact that he's making a face there. So medium, we'll punch it out. Color's like not great in this photograph. Knock down the exposure, at least it brings it out a bit. There we go. And I'm just going to crop that a tiny, tiny little bit. Good. Now I 
screams black and white to me. But at the end of the day, it's going to go because the focus is a little too soft. Whereas this one, on the other hand, we're just going to edit just a little bit. I want Helix to be straight. Good enough. Again, good. We're just quickly going through these. I like this shot. Again, nice little bit of action. And if you do have any questions, by all means, throw them in the comments there. Again, you know, nice and sharp, getting a lot of detail there. And again... And you can see very little kind of stuff. Oh, I like this shot. This, again, I saw me sort of moving back and forth and I actually set up for this. Just kind of a cool, I'm just gonna kind of drop it just a touch. Yeah. I'm gonna drop that shot. I'm gonna keep this one. Cause he's obviously, this is gonna be, this is a nice thing is that, uh, you know, again, it comes down to these guys experience like he is, he is hardcore taking a look at the camera, uh, which is super awesome. And there we go. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 17, <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21, no, oh, sorry, 20. Uh, so I'm going to reduce a few here. I like that because it's got the helix. That's definitely Stan. Even though I kind of like that one, it is gone. Stan, 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 gone, staying, 
staying because I only have one drummer shot. Fun staying. Um, yeah, that's gone. Just a little out there. I do kind of like that shot. Staying, staying. That is also staying that one. But that one's gone. I didn't even develop that one. Um, I like he's got that crazy eye going on. Crazy eye. I kind of just want to, no, 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 so one, two, three, Four, five. Uh, out on date night, can't hear you, but came to say Norman in the chat. <laughs> I love that you're streaming this content, man. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. I hope you have a great... I know you can't hear it, but I hope you have a great date night, man. Maybe you'll hear that in the replay, but uh, we're just almost done here. Uh, so we got one, two. Oh, I got the ball. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. I need to do it on Twitch as well. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen. I think I, I think I can get away with that. So again, appreciate you guys tuning in. That is super awesome. Thank you so much for sitting around and actually just watching me kind of do. Uh, my edits and all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully uh, you got some, you know, decent information out of it, how to do the edits, all those kind of things. Uh, just a little bit into my work process. If you are interested, I have done a few more of these. Uh, I have done basically a live edit of Joe Satriani's photographs from that concert, as well as a live edit from Slayer Lamb of God Behemoth testament uh some great heavy metal bands of course this is killer dwarves and of course we've got helix and not last but not least we've got kick axe all some great great canadian metal bands you know absolutely fantastic so there you have it that's all I have time for. That's, that's I guess, you know, unless you have some questions, throw them in there. Uh, we've been going for an hour. Generally speaking, you, you saw how fast I whipped through these things. If I wasn't talking, sort of explaining stuff to you, I probably would have banged these out in about half an hour. But, you know, again, that's what I like to do is just sort of do, you know, show you through the process, all that kind of stuff. Remember to smash like on the video, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, thanks again for tuning in, and I am sure that at some point I will definitely be streaming out another one of these, the next show uh, that I have booked. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, might be Collective Soul, which will be interesting because I know I'll have to use a long range uh, lens just because of the thing and push to a side, so it'll be interesting how that works but thanks again uh, for watching my live photo edits uh, appreciate it also monday to friday you can watch me do my daily live stream uh, the daily jd you can always tune in for that so thanks again guys appreciate it and until next time i will see you i'm gonna get these out and at some point i will post the link if you watch my socials uh, at pain inc you will see it or if you have are you following me on facebook jay durham uh, you will see that uh, it goes up, or even my photography page, uh, J Durham Photography on Facebook. Uh, by all means, check it out. So again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, appreciate it, and until next time, see ya.